Hey, uh, Dr. Egan, um, we were speaking about the uh, revenues you project San Francisco weddings of uh, out of state or out of San Francisco, same sex couples would generate. Um, and again, one source of those revenues comes from hotel taxes, is that correct? Yes, it is. Um, and you've basically, you've assumed uh, how long the non-San Francisco residents, same-sex couples, would stay in San Francisco when they got married. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, once again, you've not done any study of how long uh, non-San Francisco residents, same-sex couples, actually stay in San Francisco when they come here to get married. Is that correct? Um, well, no. On the, on the first time in my for my 2008 report, uh, same-sex marriage had just become legal and there was no data about it. And, uh, and for this um, expert report, uh, again, they're not, it's not legal, so there's nothing to study. So I had to make an assumption. But you could study what occurred during 2008, is that correct? Had I known that I would have had to study it, perhaps I could have put in some survey, yes, but I didn't do that. Um, and, and again, another source of res revenue you cite is uh, sales tax generated by per diem spending and wedding related ex expenditures. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and with respect to the uh, wedding related expenditures for non-San Francisco resident couples, uh, you once again just follow the Williams Institute's methodology. Is that correct? In terms of the wedding expenditures by by non-San non Francisco resident same-sex couples, I believe that's right. Yes. Okay. So you haven't done any independent no. research on that. Um, so adding all these additional revenues that you have uh, identified, I believe you testified San Francisco would gain 2.7 million dollars of annual increased tax revenues. Is that correct? I believe that's roughly correct, yes. Okay. Um, you've not considered any costs uh, San Francisco would occur, incur to administer these additional marriages. Is that correct? The costs the city and county would incur um, are reimbursed by the license fees, so that is not a net cost to the city. Uh, you haven't considered whether the city and county would have to uh, Gauge additional staffing to administer these weddings. Have you? Uh, the staffing, the fees pay for the staff. So there again, there is no net cost. The fees are, are intended to reimburse the city's costs for providing the licenses. So you've determined that the fees, as they are now, would in fact reimburse the city's costs if these additional marriages took place. Um, that's correct. I, I haven't independently verified that, but that's the purpose of those fees, and that's why I didn't consider that as a separate category of economic impact. Okay, and and you had testified that the motivating factor behind the uh, Board of Supervisors asking you to uh, analyze the effect of Prop 8 was to determine whether um, the costs would cover the additional fees of administering the weddings. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. It was to estimate the number of weddings so that the, the extra staffing resources could be needed, not to adjust the size of the fee. Okay. Um, so is your testimony that if the cost or if the uh, revenue generated from the fees was not sufficient, then the city would simply raise the fees so that it would be sufficient? to cover the cost of administering these weddings? The city uh, sets fees to ensure cost recovery. Um, it's by no means clear that uh, the fees would need to increase because you have more people paying the fees, therefore you have more resources to hire more staff. It's a per, you know, the, the way this is accounted for is each clerk can handle so many during a day and it's, it's a linear thing. So uh, it's not at all clear that the fees would need to change. So you simply you did not analyze that. For That's this correct. Program. Okay, um, and you've not considered any additional costs with, you know, printing additional marriage licenses. That's also covered by fees. Okay, and is uh, would San Francisco have to alter the forms for their marriages uh, where same-sex couples allowed to marry? That is another thing that the fee is designed to reimburse the city for. Okay, but you, you've simply not accounted for any of that. That's correct. Okay. Um, 
Uh, please turn to tab 9 in the witness binder. Um, and this is a document that's been marked Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 852. Um, do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. And what is this document? This is an email uh, thread that concludes with a response I sent to um, Margaret Seng, who works in the city's 311 Customer Service Center. Uh, and based on this email thread, my understanding is that um, a caller <coughs> to the Customer Service Center had asked what the financial impact of Prop 8 would be on the city and county of San Francisco. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and you answered that Prop 8 would result in $415,000 in lost taxes and fees. Is that correct? That's what that email says, yes. And you wrote that email? That's correct. Okay. Um, and that's quite a bit lower than the estimate you've provided uh, to the court in your opinion today. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, your Honor, we would move admission of DIX 852 into evidence. No objection, Your Honor. 852, D 852 is admitted. Yes. <clears throat> okay, now I'd, I'd like to turn to lost revenue from higher federal taxes and foregone federal benefits, which is a uh, another one of your opinions in this case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you testified earlier that federal law would have to change before uh, San Francisco and California permitting same-sex couples to marry would have this effect. Is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Um, so, and, and you, I, you recognize that same, some same-sex couples would pay more in federal taxes if they were permitted to marry. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Okay. And so your estimates depend on, you know, how many uh, pay less uh, as compared to how many same-sex couples would pay more. Is that correct? As well as the magnitude, yes. As well as the magnitude, correct. And your estimates of the amount, the relative amounts that fall into those categories and the magnitude are based on calculations by uh, plaintiff's expert, Dr. Badgett. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. You haven't done any independent uh, verification or analysis of that, these, those calculations. Is that correct? No, I've not. So we, we should ask her any questions about those, is that, about the underlying uh, validity of those. Is that correct? Yes, you may. Yeah. Um, and one thing you have done uh, is estimated how many same-sex couples married would be residing in San Francisco if they were permitted to marry. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and you assume that the percentage of same-sex couples that would marry would eventually equal the percentage of opposite-sex couples that would marry. Is that correct? That's my assumption, yes. And do you attach a, a, a time frame for how long it would take for that to take place? I don't know how long that would take. Okay. Have you attempted to determine how long that would take? No, it's not necessary for the conclusion that I reach. Okay. Uh, and for the, the conclusion that you reach, when the city would obtain the benefit that you identify, it would only be when uh, that estimate of same-sex couples that you estimate would get married were married. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and you, you base your assumption that these percentages would eventually be equal uh, just on an assumption that the only difference between uh, same-sex couples and opposite-sex couples is that same-sex couples currently face legal barriers to marriage. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, have you studied the experience of other jurisdictions uh, that have permitted same-sex couples to marry to you know, determine if, if your prediction uh, has been borne out? Uh, not for the purposes of this piece of the analysis. I did not. Okay. Um, so you don't know if your assumption is consistent with that experience? Uh, no. Um, and you are not an expert on same-sex relationships. Is that correct? Um, 
I wouldn't put myself forward as an expert on same-sex relationships. However, uh, you know, it's, when you do economic analysis, you have to make assumptions and you try to make ones that are as reasonable as possible okay. and are as informed as possible. And, and so you haven't done any independent study on whether gay and lesbian relationships differ in, in any way from opposite-sex relationships? No. Um, and I'd like to ask you to turn to tab one in the witness binder, which is actually your expert report. And I just would like to refer you to table four, which is, I believe, on the last page of that report. Yes, I see it. Um, and this is where you calculate the, uh, well, first you calculate the per percentage of heterosexual couples that are married in San Francisco. Is that correct? Yes. And then you, you know, you base your calculation of same-sex couples that would get married on that. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. And one of the figures in this table is the number of married heterosexual couples. Um, and that is reported here is 1,000. 103,707, is that correct? Yes. Now, the uh, I will represent to you that the American Community Survey, Survey data that you relied upon that we looked at earlier uh, did not have this number on it. It had the number of unmarried heterosexual couples. So I would like you to turn to uh, tab 11 in the witness binder. And... These are, this is American Community Survey data, uh, additional data from San Francisco for the uh, same years as the data that you relied on. Um, looking at this, do you recognize that uh, that is what this document is? I've not seen this before, but it looks familiar. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we would move to admit, and this is marked as uh, Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 2558 in evidence. Well, I understand, but this appears to be uh, <coughs> U.S. Census Bureau data. I think I can at least take judicial notice. Do you have any objection to this? I have no objection. Very well. 2558 is admitted. <coughs> okay, and then uh, on the first page, do you see the households by type table? Yes, I do. And do you see uh, the married couple family entry in that table? Yes, I do. And is the estimate there 103,707? Yes, it is. Is this the source of the information in your report? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you had spoken earlier about uh, coupling rates. Is that correct? That the rates at which uh, people form couples and that that could possibly change among the same-sex community if uh, they were permitted to marry. I spoke of the importance of... Um Understanding the rate of couple formation or household formation if you're attempting to estimate the number of weddings in a given year and that you can't simply look at the number of uh, um, same-sex cup existing couples in a, in a static sense and expect that the number of weddings should match that because households form and there are migration effects. Okay. Um, and do you have an estimate of the number of gay and lesbian individuals that there are in San Francisco? I don't have that estimate, no. Uh, and to make that estimate, one piece of data you would need would be the total population of San Francisco. Is that correct? Um, depending on how you would make the estimate, that could be a helpful piece of information. Okay. Um, and... On the third page of this Census Bureau report, do you see the table labeled place of birth? Yes, I do. And it lists the total population as 757,604. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, if you could turn to tab 12 in the witness binder. Uh, this is an exhibit that's been marked Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 1287, and this is a uh, Williams Institute report 
uh, called Census Snapshot California Gay, Lesbian, and Bisexual Population. Uh, you see that? Yes, I see it. Um, and you've relied on the Williams Institute's work in preparing your report, correct? I've not seen this document before. Not this document specifically, but the Williams Institute's uh, work generally. Uh, I've referred to another report prepared by the Williams Institute. Okay. And um, turn to the second page of this report. And the uh, second bullet point on that page, uh, the first sentence says, among California counties, San Francisco has the highest percentage of lesbians, gay men, and bisexuals at 14%. Is that correct? That's what that says, yes. Uh, do you have any reason to question that uh, estimate? I don't. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we would move to admit uh, DIX 1287 into evidence. 1287 is admitted. <coughs> okay. Okay, now you, in testifying earlier, you provided an estimate for how much uh, sales tax revenue could be generated um, by the federal income tax savings that same-sex couples could get if they were permitted to marry. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and again, that assumes that the net impact of that is that uh, same-sex couples actually have a, a, a net savings in federal income taxes, is that correct? It assumes that uh, same-sex couples would pay an, uh, a lower amount on average in federal income tax if they were married. Okay. And your figure assumes, I, I believe you stated this, I just want to make sure that same-sex couples spend all of the additional savings that they receive from this uh, lower federal income taxes and that they spend all of it in San Francisco, is that correct? Yes, that's an upper end estimate. They spend all of their additional income in San Francisco on taxable goods. Now, have you studied the behavior of uh, people when they uh, obtain tax savings, uh, what amount of it they actually spend? Uh, I did not for the purposes of this. I felt it was sufficient to provide an upper end estimate. Okay. The number is not particularly yeah, dispositive. So. Okay. Um, and now you've also or you also believe that uh, same-sex couples would be entitled to certain other federal benefits if they were permitted to marry. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Um, and it, is your, to your understanding, are there federal programs that take spousal income into account when determining eligibility? Yes, there are. Uh, and if the federal government recognized same-sex marriages potentially uh, the individuals in those marriages could lose eligibility for programs that took spousal income into account. Is that correct? I, uh, I'm not, I can't think of a specific example, and I'm not sure I can give you a clear answer on that. Well, if there was an example where there was a threshold of federal uh, of uh, income that was required, uh, you had to have below that income to receive a federal benefit and uh, the federal government recognized spousal income. Is it not correct that there are some individuals that would, uh, by virtue of that, perhaps go above that threshold that currently do not? Okay, I understand your example. Uh, do you agree with that? Uh, again, I, I, there is no specific program that's coming to mind, but I, I'm following your example. Uh, okay, and that, you know, hypothetically, let's, I'm going to ask you to uh, assume that there are programs that take spousal income into, into account, okay. um, and to determine the net impact of federal recognition of same-sex marriages, you would have to consider the people that could potentially lose eligibility under those programs as well as <coughs> individuals that would uh, gain eligibility for other benefits, is that correct? Um, to, to fully discuss and prepare an estimate of the uh, impact of same-sex marriage on um, 
uh, income and spending in San Francisco, you would have to do a full accounting of the ones you refer to in which the eligibility may be less, as well as others in which uh, you're only eligible for the benefit if you're married um, and you are denied that benefit if you're, if you're not married to your partner. So in order to provide a full estimate, a quantitative estimate, yes, you would need to consider both types. You, ha you haven't attempted to do that? I've not, con I've not attempted to estimate either type beyond the taxation issue, which was readily quantifiable. Okay. Um, now, another uh, source of potential savings, move on to another one of your opinions, is the cost uh, associated with San Francisco's Equal Benefits Ordinance. Is that correct? Yes. Now, permitting same-sex couples to marry in San Francisco will not repeal the Equal Benefits Ordinance, will it? No, it would not. Um, and permitting same-sex couples to marry in San Francisco would not cause San Francisco to stop defending the Equal Benefits ordin Ordinance in court, would it? <clears throat> it would not directly cause that, no. Okay. Um, and your opinion is that, uh, or your understanding, is that San Francisco has uh, expended a certain amount of money defending the Equal Benefits Ordinance in court, is that correct? That's my understanding. Um, and do you know when these legal expenditures took place? To the best of my recollection, they have, well, they have occurred since 1997 or so when the Equal Benefits Ordinance was adopted. Uh, do you know if these uh, legal expenditures are ongoing? I think in principle there's, they're ongoing and there's, an, uh, there's a potential uh, risk of expenditures there, but I don't know the specific details. Okay, if you could please turn to uh, tab 14 in the witness binder, and then there should be an Exhibit A there. And that's an exhibit that's been marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 845. Uh, do you recognize this document? Exhibit A. Titled Hours and Expenses for Matters Involving the Equal Benefits Ordinance. I don't specifically recollect this document. No. Uh, I'll represent to you that this was a document given to us uh, along with your expert report in this case. Um, so do you do you not recognize uh, or recall uh, reviewing this document? Um, this is a, yes, this is a document in which is the source for the $1.6 million in um, city costs for defending the Equal Benefits Ordinance. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to move uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 845 into evidence. No <clears throat> Very well, 845. Is um, and to your knowledge, Dr. Egan, are either of these cases ongoing? I don't have any knowledge on that. Don't have, um, okay. Um, if you could turn to tab 15 in the witness binder. And this is a... Uh, exhibit that's been marked DIX 2671, and this is a five-year report on the San Francisco Equal Benefits Ordinance from the San Francisco Human Rights Commission. And you understand the Human Rights Commission uh, administers the Equal Benefits Ordinance. That's correct. Um, have you seen this document before? I don't recall the specific document. To your understanding, does this appear to be an official uh, publication of the City of San Francisco? Yes. Uh, your Honor, we'd move to admit uh, Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 2671 evidence. Your Honor, we have no objection. Okay. Well, 2671 is admitted. Um, and if you could turn to page 12. And there's a heading that's called litigation update. You see that? Yes. Uh, and that says, this past year brought successful closure to most of the litigation challenges facing the Equal Benefits Ordinance since its enactment. Two of the three lawsuits filed against the city challenging the legality of the ordinance have concluded with the majority of the law intact. The third remains on appeal. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and it, it then goes on to list uh, under subtitle A, 
Air Transport Association case. Um, and I don't know if you recall from the prior exhibit. You can look back at it if you don't under tab 14A. But uh, was was this the litigation that consumed most of the expenses, uh, the vast majority of the expenses that you have reported in your report? Yeah, it appears that it was. Okay. And according to this, if you go into page 13, um, at the very bottom, it talks about a third lawsuit filed by S.D. Myers, uh, and it says that that appeal is pending. Is that correct? The very bottom of page 13. Yes. So based on that, that would lead one to conclude that the Air Transport Association case has been concluded. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Now, do you know if permitting same-sex couples to marry in California will convert existing domestic partners into spouses? Uh, it's my understanding that would not automatically happen. Did that happen when same-sex couples were permitted to marry in 2008? To the best of my knowledge, that did not happen. Okay. And permitting same-sex couples to marry in California will not permit, prevent same-sex couples from entering domestic partnerships. Is that correct? As far as I know, it would not. Right. And will permitting same-sex couples to marry in California require other states to permit same-sex marriage? I don't believe it would. And San Francisco's contractors have employees across the country to whom they provide benefits under the Equal, Bene uh, equal Benefits Ordinance. Is that correct? Uh, some do, certainly. Okay. And if you could please turn to tab 17 in the witness binder. And this is an exhibit that's been marked uh, DIX 698. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. And what is this document? Uh, this is a document uh, that summarizes the research of a colleague of mine in the controller's office on the city's costs in administering the Equal Benefits Ordinance. And this is one of the documents you relied upon in forming your opinions in this case? Yes, it is. Uh, your Honor, we would move for the admission of DIX 698. <clears throat> Very well, 698 is admitted. Um, and in the second paragraph, about halfway through, um, the state that between, oh, excuse, strike that. Um, Give me one moment, please, Dr. E. My question for you is, does the Human Rights Commission, the employees that they employ to administer the Equal Benefits Ordinance, do they also respond to more general uh, sexual orientation discrimination complaints? Um, I'm not completely sure on that, but it's my belief that they do. So even if uh, domestic partnerships were no longer necessary, uh, presumably the Human Rights Commission would still have to respond to these types of complaints. Is that correct? Through discrimination-related complaints? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, do you know how common it is for companies to offer domestic partnership benefits? I don't have any uh, numbers on that in my head, no. 
Okay, and if you could return to uh, tab 15. And this is the uh, five-year report on the Equal Benefits Ordinance that we just looked at. I mean, if you could turn to page one of that report after the table of contents. And in the second paragraph, it says, today over 4,500 employers extend these benefits. Is that correct? Yes. These benefits, do you understand to mean domestic partner benefits? Yes. And then if you look at the last sentence of that uh, same paragraph, it says that the concept of employer-provided domestic partner benefits moved from the far fringes of the fringe benefit landscape to become commonplace among employee benefit offerings. Is that correct? That's what it says, yes. Uh, do you agree that uh, domestic partnership benefits are commonplace? I don't have any independent basis to evaluate that statement. Okay. I gather you're moving this exhibit in. Uh, I thought that we had moved is, this one is in, it already in before. Come in? But did I not? All right, fine. Okay. Um, do you know if California has any laws requiring uh, insurance companies and other insurance providers to provide equal benefits to domestic partners? I'm not aware of that. Okay. Um, if you could turn to tab 31 in the witness binder. I will represent to you that this is a provision of California law covering group health insurance policies. Um, and the last sentence of uh, subsection A of that states that a policy may not offer or provide coverage for a registered domestic partner that is not equal to the coverage provided to the spouse of an employee, insured, or policyholder. Is that correct? That's what it says, yes. Okay. And now if you turn, uh, I believe, three pages, is another provision of uh, California law. This is California Insurance Code Section 381.5. Um, and this covers, uh, according to the last sentence of subsection A, uh, all forms of insurance regulated by this code. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And uh, in the sentence prior to that, this law provides that a policy may not offer or provide coverage for a registered domestic partner if it is not equal to the coverage provided for the spouse of an insured or policy holder. Is that correct? Well, it does seem to me, Mr. Uh, Peterson, this is a provision of law. The witness said he wasn't aware of it, and you can certainly refer to the provision of law and making your points, but um, I'm not sure this is really a proper subject for examination of the witness. Okay, well, he had uh, opined about the cost that the Equal Benefits Ordinance uh, imposes upon San Francisco companies, and I'm just testing the uh, reliability of that opinion. Well, I think I understand yeah. the point that you're making, um, and I think you've done a good job of making it. And so maybe. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, now, do you know, uh, Dr. Ian, if other government bodies have enacted equal benefits ordinances similar to San Francisco's? Uh, I'm not completely aware of, of the prevalence of that. Okay, and if you could turn to uh, tab 16 in the binder. Then marked uh, Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 2672. And this is a seven-year update on the San Francisco Equal Benefits Ordinance from the Human Rights Commission. Uh, and, Your Honor, I would like to move... Uh, DIX 2672 into evidence. 
Uh, if you could turn to page five, the conclusion, second paragraph of the conclusion states uh, that including San Francisco, by the end of 2000, fiscal year 2003-2004, there were 13 government bodies with equal benefits legislation on the books. Several more are considering such legislation, all using San Francisco's law as a model. Now, if uh, equal benefits <coughs> ordinances were significantly detrimental economically, do you think uh, all these government bodies uh, would enact them? That would depend on whether they felt that the economic cost was worth the benefit of uh, remediating discrimination. So the fact that they do enact them uh, indicates that they, they think the cost is worth the benefit. Is that correct? I wouldn't want to try and put myself in their head, but it would seem that's a reasonable conclusion. Okay. Um, and you've, you've stated that po the equal benefits ordinance possibly uh, reduces the pool of contractors who are bidding on San Francisco contracts. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, and and that is because it, that's a theoretical point. Is that correct? You've not studied whether uh, contractors actually um, are not bidding on San Francisco's contracts because of the Equal Benefits Ordinance. Is that correct? No. I mean, it's hard to observe companies when they don't do something, and that would be right. the case here. And another opinion that you've provided in this case is that uh, the city and county uh, could s save money on health care that they provide to the uninsured. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and your basis for that assumption is just that you believe there are some uh, uninsured members of same-sex couples that would be covered by their partner's private insurance if they were... Uh, if they got married, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And, and you have not considered those provisions of the California Code that we referred to earlier in uh, forming that opinion, is that correct? In what context? Uh, in the context where they uh, mandate insurance companies to provide equal benefits to spouses, and domestic partners. You have not considered that in uh, your assumption that some uninsured members of same-sex couples would be covered uh, if they could get married. They're not currently. Maybe if you move to the point you're trying to make, uh, uh, actually this is an adverse witness, you can cross-examine him in the old-fashioned way <laughs> rather than to take his deposition. <laughs> um, well, the point I would like to make, Dr. Egan, is you simply have not considered how whether California law would impact that question. Is that correct? The question of whether there exist uninsured people in San Francisco whose, whose unmarried partners are, have private health insurance? Yes. Um, I have not, although based on my quick reading of the law in front of me, it only requires that domestic partner benefits be not be less than married partner benefits, it doesn't really require them to provide domestic partner benefits. Okay. Well, I'm not here to ask you about your understanding of the law. Okay. Um, and you simply don't know how many uh, gay and lesbian couples would get insurance. Uh, were they permitted to marry? I do not have okay. an estimate of that, no. And the cost of providing that insurance would just be shifted from San Francisco to the private sector, is that correct? the cost of their health care, essentially. Uh, that's true, although it may be better to think of it as they're being shifted from the uninsured population to the insured population, which is probably a net economic gain from the point of view of society as a whole. But the answer to the question is the private sector would be picking up for the tab where the public sector now is doing that. Is that's that correct. correct. Okay. Um, and now you've also offered an opinion on the cost of providing a health services to the LGBT community, is that correct? Yes. And you believe that same-sex marriage, permitting same-sex marriage could reduce this, is that correct? 
Um, he's yes, caught. that's correct. Uh, and that is because you believe extending marriage to same-sex couples will lessen discrimination against members of the LGBT community? That seems like a reasonable assumption to me, yes. And uh, you're not a uh, sociologist or uh, a uh, psychologist, are you? So that's not an expert opinion that that would occur, is that correct? No, it's not. Okay. Um, and you believe that San Francisco has a brand as a popular tourism destination for gay individuals, is that correct? I just draw that conclusion based on the number of out-of-state same-sex marriages that we hosted. Uh, and you believe that San Francisco is a particular attraction for gay and lesbian tourists? Um, I wouldn't. I don't have any direct information to compare San Francisco to other places in that regard, but I, w I would think that it is, yes. Okay. Um, and yet, and generally, do you think San Francisco is a, a gay-friendly city? I would say so in general, yes. Uh, in, in, in light of these things, do you still believe that uh, same-sex or gay and lesbian individuals have uh, elevated rates of behavioral health services because of the psychological effects of the discrimination they endure in San Francisco? That's what I've been told by our Department of Public Health, and I don't have any reason to doubt that statement. You haven't done any independent research on that yourself? That's not my field. No. Okay. Um, and the next uh, subject that you opined upon is the cost of uh, cost incurred because of bullying in the San Francisco School District. Is that correct? Yes. And your opinion on that subject is based solely on uh, the report, the economic cost of bullying at school that you referenced. Is that correct? That's correct. You have done any independent study on that. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And that report did not uh, directly address the experience in San Francisco. Is that correct? That's correct. It was California. Okay. Um, but it's true, is it not, that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, now, finally, you've talked about some, it's true that you've talked about, uh, is it not, that you've talked about economic advantages of marriage that cannot be quantified. Is that correct? That's correct. And you believe there's uh, research supporting the, the uh, statement that there are significant economic advantages to marriage. Is that correct? I'm aware of that research, yes. That research does not uh, study same-sex married couples, does it? To my knowledge, it does not, right? Um, I'd like to turn to uh, tab 19 in the witness binder. Uh, this is a RAND Institute study, marriage assets and savings. Been, it's been marked PX 809. Do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. And uh, this is a study that you relied upon for your opinion that married couples generate more wealth than single people, correct? That's correct. Uh, and this does not address same-sex married couples, does it? It does not. Your Honor, we'd move to admit PX 809 in evidence. Very well. 809 is in. Uh, if you turn to tab 20, the witness binder, please, Dr. Egan. Um, and this is a has been marked PX807. It's a press release from, uh, looks like, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. And uh, this is what you've relied upon for your opinion, that married men are more likely to engage in healthy behaviors than single men. Is that correct? In this and the article to which it refers, yes. Okay. Um, and, and this is the only uh, item that you included in the materials considered portion of your expert report. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and the studies reported here did not, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, consider same-sex marriages. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, now, if you turn to tab 21, uh, I, I think, Your Honor, I would like to move PX807 into evidence. I believe I neglected to ask you that. <clears throat> Very well, 807. 807. 807 is admitted. 
Um, if you could please turn to tab 21, Dr. Egan. Um, this has been marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 803. Uh, and this is data from the California Health Interview Survey that you relied upon for your opinion that unmarried men have more emotional and mental health problems than married men. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to move exhibit number PX803 into evidence. Hearing no objection, 803 is in. Uh, 803. PX, plaintiff's exhibit. Um, and this does not break down uh, same sex and opposite sex marriages, does it? That's correct. Okay. So you simply, you don't have any research uh, that supports your view that the uh, advantages of opposite sex marriage would flow to same sex marriage, is that correct? My research doesn't make any distinction. Your research does not include same sex married couples, is that correct? Most of my research predated when same sex marriage was legal at any point in the United States. Okay. Um, now you've not considered the impact on opposite sex couples in San Francisco that extending marriage to same sex couples may have, is that correct? I've not. Um, and it's true, is not that if opposite sex couples got married at lower rates than they did before, uh, that it could, could offset the benefits you see from same sex marriage, is that correct? If it were the case that uh, same sex marriage reduced the marriage rate for opposite sex couples, then yes, that would be a, um, that could have an impact. Um, and if you turn to tab 22 of the witness binder, um, I believe this is already in evidence. This is the uh, marriage license appointment data. Uh, and this has evidence, uh, data from the year 2007 as well as from the year 2008. And uh, I will represent to you that from the date June 17th to November 4th, 2008, there were 3,239 opposite sex marriages. And that from the date June 17th to October 31st, 2007, which is a few days shorter, there were 4,009 opposite sex marriages. And that's, uh, there's a column that says actual marriage licenses and they, uh, for opposite sex couples for both the year 2008 and 2007. You see the, that data there? I'm not seeing the numbers you're referring to. Well, the numbers are broken down by month, and I've just... You're looking at the annual totals, or are you look I'm looking at the months uh, during which same-sex marriage was, was legal in 2008, and then those same dates in 2007. Right. And I'm representing to you that I've added up those figures, and that in 2008, there were more than 700 fewer opposite-sex marriages in San Francisco than there were in 2007. Marriage license appointments? Marriage licenses, actual marriage licenses issued. Okay. Um, so if that's true, that means that less opposite-sex couples married in San Francisco during the time that same-sex marriage was legal than the comparable time the prior year, correct? Um, it would seem to me, looking at this data, that in some of the months uh, there were fewer opposite-sex weddings, and in some of the months there were more and that your general statement about the year seems to be correct for that one, two, for that one pair of years. Uh, and I, I've actually just added up the months during which same-sex marriage was legal in order to account for you know, some months more, some months less. I understand, but for example, um, June 17, 2008 to June 30, 2008, there were 548 opposite-sex marriage licenses and 1,076 same-sex. In the previous year and during that same period, there was only 462 opposite. So for that two-week period, there was an increase. Right. But for the period as a whole, there was a, a decrease. Or the you know, five-month, yeah, for that multi-month period, there was a decrease. Okay. Um, and Dr. Egan, you've testified that you teach at the University of California at Berkeley. Is that correct? That's correct. And your courses are focused on the economic analysis of subnational and sub-state areas, such as cities and metropolitan areas. Is that correct? That's right. Um, and one course, at least one course that you've taught was essentially a study of why the economics of cities differ from one another and what policy steps can be taken to achieve industrial growth, correct? Yes. Um, and same-sex marriage has not come up in that course, is that correct? That's correct. And it's not come up in any of the courses that you've taught, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. 
Okay. Now, if you could turn to tab 23 of the witness binder. This is an exhibit that's been marked, Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 854. Um, you recognize this document? Yes, I do. And was this the uh, economic uh, strategy document that you helped San Francisco put together when you were at ICF? That's correct, yes. Uh, Your Honor, we'd like to admit uh, Defendant Intervenors Exhibit 854 into evidence. Very well, 854 is in. Uh, and you were the project manager of this project, is that correct? Yes, I was. Uh, and now, I know this is a lengthy document, but anywhere in here does it uh, mention same-sex marriage? Uh, I don't believe it does. It, it likely doesn't mention many of the things that we study uh, in the Office of Economic Analysis, that have, uh, policy issues that have a material economic impact on the city. I mean, this is really a study of the macroeconomic infrastructure that drives San Francisco's uh, economy. It's not meant to be an exhaustive catalog of all of the uh, possible policy steps, particularly state policy steps, that could impact the city's economy in a significant way. Okay. Uh, but it's safe to say that same-sex marriage is not part of the San Francisco economic strategy as set forth in this document. Is that correct? It's true that by 2007, same-sex marriage was not a policy option available to the city and county of San Francisco. Okay. Um, now, I would, if you turn to tab 24, I just want to briefly discuss this uh, national elevator industry uh, benefit plan that was introduced on your examination. Um, uh, this says that this, uh, well, first of all, do you know what the National Elevator Industry is, benefit plan is? It's my understanding it's a union. Okay. And uh, this says that it's based in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Is that correct? That's what it says, yes. Uh, do you know if the union has members in California? I... I don't, I, I don't recall. I don't know. If, I don't believe that I know that one way or another. Okay. And uh, the only information you have about this uh, union's benefit plans is this letter. Is that correct? That's right. Um, and in the uh, first sentence, it says that uh, it's addressing the letter to someone who attempted to enroll their same-sex partner into the benefit plan. Is that correct? Yes, it does. And it doesn't uh, indicate that that person and their same-sex partner is married, does it? Uh, not directly, but it does say based on their change of policy that um, redefines marriage to uh, remove the, def the person of an opposite sex clause. On that basis, it says to the um, addressee, you may reapply for coverage, which leads me to suspect that they're uh, married to their partner. Another possibility is that the National Elevator Industry Benefit Plan would uh, uh, construe a domestic partner relationship uh, as a marriage for the purpose of their benefit plan. Is that correct? Well, um, no. Uh, it says on the first page, further the SPD provides on page 24 that the word spouse refers only to a person of the opposite sex who is husband or wife, and there's no reference to domestic partnership. I believe husband, I believe that's the provision that uh, is going to change. Right, but it's not... Um, The provision changes to provide that a participant who has legally married a person of the same sex under laws of his state, if such a marriage is recognized in his state with a proper and legally binding marriage certificate, may be eligible to enroll his same sex spouse in the NEI health benefit plan. It seems to be that that's explicitly excluding domestic partner. That's not language actually from the plan. That's their this letter's language construing the plan. Is that correct?
I'm not sure. I mean, it is simply attempting to convey to a member what their what their rights are, and it doesn't mention domestic partnership, and it appears to define the affected relationships in a way that is that is uh, clearly limited to marriage. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Very well. Redirect, please. And I will be very brief. Um, before I begin, Your Honor, there's one point I'd like to clear up for the record. Did I understand correctly that the court took judicial notice of the five hate crimes reports? Of the what? The five hate crimes reports that I mentioned earlier but, but did not ask the witness about. Those four, was it four or five? I uh, believe it's five. It's five. PX 0672 through 676. No, I did not. Uh, I don't believe I was asked to take judicial notice of those. Your Honor, I would like to ask the court to take judicial notice of those as official government documents and also documents that were authenticated by the Attorney General in response to requests for admissions. Peterson? Very well. Thank you, Your Honor. We better recite precisely what exhibits those are. <clears throat> yes, they are PX672, PX673, PX674, PX675, and PX676. Very well, thank you. Dr. Egan, you were asked some questions about whether domestic partner celebrations occurred or were, were expended, people expended money on celebrating their domestic partnerships. Do you recall that by Mr. Patterson? Yes. Are you aware of any studies about domestic partnership celebration expenditures? No, I'm not aware of any such study. And are you aware of whether or not San Francisco experienced an uptake in wedding-related economic activity in 2008 when same-sex marriage was legal? Well, certainly San Francisco experienced an uptake in weddings, and I could conclude from that that the economic activity associated with weddings increased as well. And are you aware of research that people spend money on weddings, have out-of-town guests, and spend money when they are tourists in San Francisco? Um, there is a significant industry that helps people spend money on their wedding and uh, provides tourism associated with that. There is a lot of evidence that there is a wedding industry. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Egan. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about your, your 2008 report about which you were asked some questions on cross-examination. Um, you, you talked a little bit about differences between that report and the analysis that you did today. Is there any difference between the per wedding expenses, the per wedding costs um, that you saw between the 2008 report and the report you prepared and your opinions in this case? Uh, we made the same assumption. Uh, 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 well, we use the same source of information re related to how much wedding expenses are in both cases. I see. That assumption was consistent. Yes. And when you looked at wedding expenses, did you use that wedding industry data that we've just discussed? Yes, we did. And you also talked about some differences in the methodology that you used to determine the number of weddings that you projected would occur. Is that right? That's right. And why did you change your methodology between the 2008 report and your estimates in this case of the number of weddings, of same-sex weddings, that we would expect to see? Uh, when I was asked to do the report in 2008, uh, I was um, looking, as I always do, for um, similar research that had uh, tried to address the same question to see if I could learn anything from their methodology. And I found the Williams Institute report on the economic impacts of marriage in California and thought it would be uh, good to rely on a third party source for a methodology. So what I did to project the number of weddings for the 2008 report was to estimate uh, using the census data, what, uh, following as closely as I could, the Williams Institute methodology, how many uh, unmarried same-sex partners are there in California. And then as they did for their study, look back to the Massachusetts experience and say what percentage of them would get married in each year. And that led me to my estimate 
of the three-year number of weddings that is contained in my 2008 report for the residents. I did something else for the non-residents that was built on San Francisco's experience during one month in 2004. The main difference uh, issue, however, is that that methodology significantly underestimated what we actually saw from June of 2008 to November 2008. And um, I, I realized that uh, uh, it would not make sense to reapply a methodology in consideration for this case that had undercounted the actual number of marriages in, in 2008, even though that approach from the Williams Institute does have the advantage of giving uh, an annual estimate and does have the advantage of bringing in the, the experience of another place. I thought it would be simpler and more straightforward to say, this is what we experienced. We, the city and county of San Francisco, during this period in 2008, I don't see any reason that would change if Proposition 8 uh, were lifted and same-sex couples could marry again in San Francisco. I think the past is a pretty good estimate of the future, at least in the short term. So in essence, you changed your methodology to reflect your, the experience, is that right? Correct. I tried to improve the methodology this time around. And uh, you also fielded a couple of questions about whether you should have changed the methodology to account for what happened in other states. Um, if I asked you to assume that after 2008, Connecticut had legalized same-sex marriage, would that cause you to revise your projections for San Francisco? Not really, no. Uh, I don't think a significant amount of the weddings in San Francisco would come from, from uh, Connecticut residents. And as I was saying earlier, uh, the mere fact that a couple could get married in Connecticut wouldn't mean that they wouldn't come to San Francisco to get married. We also talked about the short-term nature of your projections with respect to the number of same-sex couples who would marry in San Francisco. I mean, and you were asked to compare some census data with with your projections. Do you know whether everyone who gets married lives together before marriage? I don't know that. Okay. And the projections that you made in your opinions for this case, are those short-term or long-term projections? They're short-term projections. And assume that the short-term turns out to be very short. Does that change your ultimate conclusion that denying marriage to same-sex couples has negative economic impacts on San Francisco with respect to wedding expenditures? No, the actual numbers only affect the magnitude of the impact, but there's an impact in, in any event. And is there wedding-related activity that you would expect going into the future in the long term if couples were permitted to marry? Certainly because of the migration of people to San Francisco and subsequent uh, formation of couples who elect to get married in the future. You were also asked about pent-up demand, and you were asked to look at the county clerk statistics about opposite-sex couples who had, or sorry, same-sex couples who had appointments to get married after November 5th of 2008. Um, is there anything that happened on November 4th, 2008 that might have affected that, whether people would be signing up to, to, for marriage appointments? Uh, I don't think anyone signed up after November 4th and between November 4th and November 24th when that uh, report was prepared, I would imagine many might have canceled. I don't know, frankly, what the number looked like as of November 3rd, uh, but I would say I, I can't imagine any reason other than Proposition 8 that would require people, that would make people not want to get married after November 5th. You were also asked some questions about uh, the number of uninsured partners, or same-sex couples for whom one member of the partnership is employed, uh, the other one does not have access to insurance. Is, do, do you recall uh, that testimony? Yes, I do. Let me ask you, are you an expert on California insurance law? No, I'm not. Are you an expert on ERISA and any preemptive effects it might have about benefits plans? Um, no, I'm not. Are you an expert on the extent of the applicability of California law to out-of-state insurance companies? No, I'm not. Are you aware of research that indicates that uh, companies do, in fact, offer domestic partners benefits less frequently than same-sex partners or any other information that would lead you to believe that that's the case? Um, 
Not compared to, no, actually I'm not aware of specific research on that question. But if we assume that domestic partners are not insured at the mm -hmm. same rates that married couples are insured, does your conclusion that San Francisco's expense for covering uninsured populations hold true that San Francisco incurs a greater expense because marriage is not legal between same-sex couples? Yes, because even if someone is a registered domestic partner, based on your assumption, they are less likely to have insurance, and therefore there may be more partners who are domestic partners uh, who, w with one partner who is uninsured. And let's talk a little bit about contracting and the Equal Benefits Ordinance. Um, to the extent that discrimination against same-sex couples and lesbian and gay and bisexual and transgendered individuals exists, do you, would you expect that San Francisco's costs to investigate complaints of discrimination would be higher? If there, <coughs> excuse me, could you if repeat If such that? discrimination exists and there is an office charged with investigating such discrimination, does that incur costs? Certainly, I would say in proportion to the amount of discrimination. And to the extent that companies do not offer domestic partners equal insurance coverage as they do with married couples, does that increase San Francisco's contracting costs because of the San Francisco Equal Benefits Ordinance? To the extent that <coughs> it limits our, our pool of contractors, yes, it does. And if other local governments also have equal benefits ordinances, would you expect a similar increase in their contracting costs from their efforts to combat marriage discrimination? I would expect the same thing to hold there as well. And um, Dr. Egan, you were asked a little bit about the rates of opposite sex couples marrying between June and November 2008. If you were going to undertake a study of the rates at which opposite sex couples got married, um, would you look at more than four and a half months of data to undertake that study? Um, I think it would be prudent to do that, and uh, yes. And if more data about same-sex couples' marriage rates were available, would you have looked at that here in California to undertake your study of those rates? Yes. Dr. Egan, is it generally the case that improvements among lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered individuals and among same-sex couples in health, healthy behaviors, wealth accumulation, and productivity increase San Francisco's payroll and property taxes? Yes, it is. And is it generally the case that those factors, increased health and wealth, increase the city's economic health? Yes, they do. I have nothing further. Very well. Thank you, uh, sir. You may step down. Yeah. <clears throat> Can we resume at um, maybe 1 o'clock? Is that going to give everybody enough time? All right. Very well. Let's see. The next witness is going to be Dr. Meyer. Doctor? Dr. Meyer. Dr. Meyer. Fine. <clears throat>